Praise the Lord, everyone. We greet you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and welcome you to our Bible study of the New Covenant Apostolic Church of Holly, Michigan. Our subject today is one that is very important. Its title is Everlasting Righteousness. The word righteousness is a very important word in the Bible. The word righteousness and its counterpart, righteous, appear 540 times in the Bible. The biblical definition of righteousness is the quality of being right in the eyes of God, including character, our nature, conscience, our attitude, conduct, our actions, and command, the words that we use. A short and more concise definition is simply this, being in a right relationship with God. Righteousness affects every aspect of our lives. How is anyone ever able to attain this kind of righteousness? It only comes through the blood of Jesus. The purpose of the Old Testament law was to teach God's people how to live righteously. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25, the scripture said this, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as He hath commanded us. The law revealed the character of God and what pleases Him. Because of the hardness of their hearts, the Israelites were constantly disregarding the laws of God given to them. We read over and over again how that they were constantly hardening their hearts against the Lord choosing rather to worship other gods and to be influenced by the other nations around them that knew not God. Judges chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, the scripture said this, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. This scripture just shows one example of how that the Israelites were influenced by the people that were around them. In Galatians chapter 3 verse 19, the Bible said this, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. So the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. In this scripture we read that the law was given because of the transgressions of the people. The law was a schoolmaster to illustrate what is an acceptable lifestyle to God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 24, the Bible said this, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The law showed them exactly what sin was. Notice Romans chapter 5 and verse 20. Moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. In the Bible we read about several people who were righteous or just in the eyes of God. Genesis chapter 7 verse 1. The scripture said this, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And in the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 6, notice what the scripture said. 
even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. In Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14, notice what the Bible said. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. They were called righteous because their lives were filled with choices. They chose to put God first in their lives and to turn their back on sin and to do the right thing. However, even though their actions were righteous, they still fell short of the perfect sinless righteousness of God. The Bible tells us that all men are sinners who fall short of the righteousness of God. Notice Romans chapter 3 and verse 10, what the scripture said. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20, notice what the scripture said. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. The Lord spoke through the mouth of his prophets about a time when he would put a new heart and a new spirit within his people. This new heart would desire to walk in the ways of the Lord. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 11 verses 19 and 20, this is what the Bible said. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them an heart of flesh, that they may walk in my statutes, and keep my ordinances, and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. The question is, when would this happen? And how would this happen? In Romans chapter 8, verses 3 through 6, notice what the scripture said. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In these scriptures we read that Jesus came to do what the law could not do. Jesus came and condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteousness of the law could be fulfilled in us. Jesus is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes and obeys. Notice Romans chapter 10 verse 4 what the scripture said. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. It is only through Jesus that we can bring forth fruits of righteousness. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 11, notice what the Bible said. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. He who knew no sin became sin for us, so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 notice what the Bible said. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The most important question of all is this. How can I attain this righteousness? How can I be righteous in the eyes of God? This question deserves a biblical answer. The final instructions that Jesus gave to his disciples 
were to go and preach and teach all nations and every creature. Whosoever believeth and is baptized would be saved. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, 20, the scripture said this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. We want to remind everyone that this, this commission that was given in Matthew chapter 28 was not a baptismal service. It is only directions given to the apostles to go to the city of Jerusalem. Notice in Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16, what the scripture said. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. The end result of our faith is always, always proven through acts of of obedience. Jesus told Nicodemus that he had to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. In John chapter 3 verses 3, 5, and 7 notice what the Bible said. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. After his resurrection, Jesus opened the understanding of the apostles that they might understand the scriptures. Notice Luke chapter 24 and verse 45, what the Bible said. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. It was after his resurrection that Jesus spent another 40 days with the disciples, speaking and teaching them things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1, verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Jesus wanted to make sure that the disciples had a very clear understanding exactly what the gospel message was. Jesus also told the disciples that they would be baptized with the Holy Ghost very soon. Notice Acts chapter 1 verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. With this Holy Ghost baptism would come power to be witnesses of this great gospel message to all, to everyone, to whosoever would. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, this is what the scripture said. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Just as Jesus said, the disciples, along with over 100 other believers, they did receive the gift of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Notice what Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4 said. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit 
gave them utterance. These same disciples that Jesus had so diligently prepared then went everywhere teaching and preaching the wonderful gospel message. Peter, the man to whom Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven, was the one who preached the very first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19, the Bible said this, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The hearers that day, the day of Pentecost, were so moved by Peter's words, they had an intense desire to believe that Jesus Christ was, in fact, their long-awaited Messiah. Because of this, they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They too wanted to be in a right state with God. They wanted to be forgiven. Peter did not pray with them a sinner's prayer. Peter did not have them repeat a certain prayer or words. Peter did not tell them to accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Peter did tell them what they had to do. They had to do something. Peter told them first repent and then be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the removal, the remission, the pardoning, the forgiveness of their sins and then to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost just as they all had done earlier that same day. Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 39 this is what the Bible said. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call this is the biblical answer to the questions how can I attain righteousness how can I be in a right state with God how can I receive this new heart it starts with believing but believing to the point where your faith produces acts of obedience to the directions given in the Word of God. In conclusion, when you repent, that is, make a heartfelt decision to turn your back on sin and to turn toward God. When you have your sins washed away through baptism in the name of Jesus, and when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues you are born again now you are in a right state with God our original definition of righteousness at the beginning of this study seemed like a tall order but when one receives a new heart that new heart ushers into our lives a whole new lifestyle the righteousness that we have received when we are born again is just the beginning. After the initial born-again experience, we must be devoted. We must have a devoted lifestyle to the dedication to God. We must continue to pursue righteousness in our lives. Notice in Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 what Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. What Jesus was saying was, learn of me, get an understanding. Getting an understanding can only come through growth, through study of the Word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, this is what the Bible said. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, 
charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. We must always make the right decisions to maintain righteousness in our lives. For in doing this, we will lay hold on eternal life. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11 and 12, the Bible said this, But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Jesus came to bring us everlasting righteousness. Notice Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, what the scripture said. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Also in the book of Psalms, chapter 112, verses 1, 2, and 3, notice what the Bible says about righteousness. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. This everlasting righteousness, it begins with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Notice what Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. It is truly everlasting righteousness because Jesus is everlasting, eternal. This concludes our lesson today on the subject everlasting righteousness. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you enjoyed the content of our channel, Make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell icon for notification when we upload new videos. If you have any comment, any question, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. Thank you and God bless you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.